All right, so let's start. Uh, welcome everyone to this practice session. Um, today I will go through the sample solution of the third homework, so the uh, task with the polynomial. And I'll be getting into your questions regarding that homework um, and the current homework. Um, so yeah, whenever you have a question, just write in the chat and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. So I think I'm going to start with just going through the sample solution of last week's homework. And for that, I'm just going to um, implement the, the task uh, live. And whenever you have a question, just write in the chat and I'll answer that. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay. So I hope you can see the task now, the polynomial task. Okay, so the first thing um, we, will, we probably want to do is um, just organize our Jupyter lab. So it's uh, very handy to have this readme, so the task description open at all time. So we're just gonna move that to the side here. And uh, it's also very handy to have a terminal here. So I'm just gonna start a terminal and uh, yeah, move that down here. I'm just going to close this to have more room. Okay, and then I'm going to start with this task. The task was to implement a class uh, called polynomial. And uh, yeah, this should implement some basic math uh, functions. And uh, yeah, it was basically uh, mostly to test your knowledge or to improve, improve your knowledge uh, of the dunder functions in Python. So we're going to start with the first use case here. First one is the constructor. So we have to implement a constructor which takes uh, a variable amount of arguments. So for that we'll have to use the asterisk args. And um, yeah, this should uh, take some coefficients of a polynomial and just save them in some variable. So to start that, we're going to remove this pass here. We have to remove the pass. The pass just tells Python that uh, we don't want to implement anything in this class. Um, but now, as we want to implement something here, we can remove that. And we start with the um, init dunder function, uh, which is the constructor in Python. And we'll add this uh, star args, which is, uh, as you know, this uh, yeah, this variable amount of arguments you can pass to a function. And then to save this, we can just write self dot, um, and then we'll call this coefficients and set that to args. And this is already the first um, use case done. And we just took this args list and saved it in this underscore coefficients variable attribute. And uh, yeah, now we're done with this. And uh, if we want to test this already, we can uh, use PyTest for that, of course. So here I'm just going to test uh, the first, um, yeah, the first file, which is the basic. And um, if I do that, I see two passed, seven failed. So uh, one of them was the import test. If we didn't imp uh, import any additional libraries, that passed, of course. And the second one is the um, of course, the constructor one. I can also uh, add this very verbose flag, and then we'll see um, up here use case one creation passed. So we're done with uh, number one, and uh, yeah, we can go over to number two. Number two, uh, use case two. Here we have to implement the len function, and uh, this is again a dunder function. And uh, this is called when we use this len function, which is um, standard in Python. And uh, this is implemented for many of the uh, built-in classes and also um, pretty much every library that has some form of um, object which can have a length will implement this uh, len function. And it's just a nice way to get um, the length of some object. And this function is called underscore underscore len and then two underscores again, and we just get the self parameter. And um, 
what this len should return for our polynomial is um, the maximum, uh, maximal exponent here, or in other words, the degree of the polynomial. And the uh, maximal exponent is, um, we can get that very easily since we already have our coefficients list here and uh, we have one coefficient for every exponent in our polynomial. We can just return uh, len of our um, coefficients. And if we do this, uh, the second function should already be done. And if we run uh, the PyTest again, we can see three passed. So a use case two is already done as well. And uh, yeah, you can see these were two uh, one-liners. So this wasn't too hard, I hope. Um, now the third method is a little bit more tricky. Um, here we should implement some form of printing uh, this polynomial and it's also specified how this should happen. So this is one example of um, how this polynomial should be printed. And um, yeah, this should work when just calling the print function and passing um, a polynomial object. So for that we will have to use the uh, wrapper uh, method is again a dunder uh, method in python so um, yeah we'll implement that now this wrapper uh, again just one parameter itself and then uh, now what we have to do is um, implement some way of um, yeah converting our coefficients with exponents into a string and return that string so what we have to do is somehow iterate over coefficients and uh, bring them into this form so that we have this uh, coefficient x, uh, a caret, and then the exponent. And as uh, stated in the constructor up, uh, up uh, here, it says that uh, when it's created, the first argument should be the uh, exponent zero. So the first, um, yeah, the first element in our coefficients list here will have exponent zero. But when printing, the exponent zero here should be at the end. So we have to reverse our coefficients list somehow that we start with the coefficient for the highest exponent. And uh, yeah, we can um, do that by uh, doing the uh, calling the reversed function, reversed, um, and passing our coefficients. And this will already uh, reverse them such that it starts with the highest uh, exponent and it goes down to the lowest one. And um, since we want to do something with all of them, we can uh, use a list comprehension here and we want to do just one thing to every coefficient. Um, so the list comprehension is a good choice here. So we'll add the square brackets around that. And then um, what we want to do is um, make this a string. So take each coefficient and make a string out of that. And I'm going to do that with an F string. And for now, I'm, going, I'm just going to leave that empty and uh, write this for, um, and what do I need here? I need some way of knowing the exponent and I need some way of knowing the coefficient. So I will probably have to have two variables. Um, I'm just going to call them, uh, well, power maybe for the exponent and coef for um, our coefficient and that is in and for now we just have one uh, list here and this will just give us one variable but since we want uh, some way of knowing the power here um, we're going to use enumerate and uh, enumerate will give us the index of the current um, element and now we can use that i'm just going to try to make this bigger um, now we can use that to, um, yeah, write this a coefficient x caret exponent here. So first the coefficient, uh, which is just coef, and then we need this x caret, and then we need the power. And since power starts from zero here, enumerate will start at zero, the index zero, and uh, we should start with the highest exponent here. We'll have to uh, somehow reverse that. And we can't call reverse on enumerate since enumerate is a generator and uh, reversed works with iterators. We'll have to uh, yeah, reverse that manually. So what we can do is uh, take the len of our coefficients 
or we can even just take the len of self since uh, that is the same for our case and uh, say minus our current power and we'll have to add minus one since we want to go down to index zero and uh, yeah what this will give us is a list with um, with these patterns of coefficient x caret exponent and um, yeah just these strings in a in a list for all the exponents we have um, but now what this function also states is that uh, you should only print those um, coefficients that are not zero and we have a very simple fix for that uh, we can just add an if at the end of this list comprehension so we only want to add this to the list if the coefficient is not zero and this will now give us the strings for all the coefficients that are non-zero okay but now this is a list and we want to make this a string and uh, one very easy way to turn a list of strings into um, a concatenated list of strings uh, so just one string um, is using the join function and this is called on a string and we want to join around the plus sign so just uh, take the string with the plus here and call join on there and to this join function we will pass the result of this list comprehension so all our um, small exponents here so all coefficients with the exponent and this will give us uh, the whole thing without the parentheses and now to add those uh, oops i will just uh, yeah add a parenthesis here concatenate that to our um, to our polynomial here and again add a closing parenthesis at the end and i want to return that whole thing and this would be the representation function done if we test this now um, we can see four passed here if we scroll up the printing function passed that's good and now this is a very long line uh, we could also make this smaller so if we want to make it a little bit more readable for example um, we could call this string list for example and just say this variable string list is this list comprehension here and now um, we just return this join of the string list here and this is probably a bit more readable uh, since we um, yeah create the string for each coefficient first and then join them together at the end to return that to see if that still works yeah still four functions passed uh, four tests passed that's good all right so the next use case is this coefficients attribute and it says that we want to access coefficients um, the coefficients attribute from the polynomial but we want to have that uh, read only so we don't want to be able to um, replace this coefficients uh, attribute of the class but we still want to access it and read it and uh, yeah for that in python since we don't have um, the visibility in classes we'll have to use a decorator here and um, yeah we can't make this a private or protected attribute of the class um, but we can create this function with the decorator which then acts as um, yeah as a read-only attribute basically so to do this we will have to use the property uh, decorator and then uh, write that above a method and call this coefficients just as the uh, yeah the attribute that we want to access and uh, yeah this will need a self since it needs access to the object uh, the polynomial object itself and uh, here we can just return uh, the self dot underscore coefficients coefficients okay i hope that is spelled correctly um, and now this works because uh, this will return this attribute which is not the same as this function here if we would outside just write um, like like here poly six dot coefficients then it will use this method here to access the coefficients and inside the method it will return the underscore coefficients and will actually create a copy of that so we'll return a copy here um, 
using this coefficients function and the decorator will turn that into a read-only attribute. Uh, yeah, this is a little, little weird, I would say, but uh, there is no other way to do that in Python since uh, Python doesn't have visibility in classes. So, as we can see, 5 passed now. Um, this worked. Coefficients, use case 4 passes. Uh, that's great. Okay, so next use case. Um, next, we want to compare the poly uh, polynomials. And to compare, um, we'll have to implement some more operators. We'll have to overwrite uh, some more operators. And um, namely, we have to do the less than and greater equals operators as uh, requested in this task. And for that, we can just um, yeah, implement them. We write uh, the, uh, we use the uh, Dunder function le for less, no, we use lt for less than. Le would be less than or equal. Uh, Lt for less than, and this will need self. And this also gets another uh, parameter, and we'll just call that other. And this is the object that we want to compare to. Um, yeah, and since we want to compare polynomials here, and uh, we want to do that using the degree, we um, yeah, have to compare the degree of self against the degree of other. And we already implemented a way to get the um, degree above. And that was using this len function. Len will get the degree of a polynomial. And um, yeah, if we want to compare uh, the degree of self to the degree of other, we can just return the len of self um, less than the len of other. And this will compare the degree of the two. Okay, and then we should also implement the greater equals. So the GE Dunder method, um, it also gets two parameters, self and another uh, polynomial. And here um, we can either just uh, return len self greater equals len other. This would work perfectly, perfectly fine. Or what we can also do is uh, return not, um, not self smaller other. So this is just the negation of this function here. And since greater equals um, is the negation basically of less than, we can also use this here. Um, yeah, and this should be the comparing co polynomials task. So the use case five done, uh, six passed. Great, if we scroll up, uh, comparison passed here. So next use case done. Um, now we want to add the polynomials. And at this use case, um, I think some people had problems um, and we got some yeah, questions regarding that. So I'm going to talk a bit more about this. And um, this already had some, some code here. So in this hint, uh, we get this lambda function. And I'm going to show you what that does. Um, but yeah, first, um, we'll have to write this dunder add method. Um, and this will be called if we uh, want to add something to a polynomial object using the plus sign. Um, yeah, so add gets an other parameter as well, since we want to add some object to self. And uh, the sum object shouldn't just be any object, but we actually want to check what kind of object that is. And um, as written in the description here, um, yeah, you're supposed to make this method work for polynomials of the same degree. So first we have to check if the um, the other object is a polynomial, because if not, then um, yeah, we can't get the degree. And it also says that down here, um, make sure to also return not implemented for all other possible types of the argument. Um, so if other is not a polynomial, we should return not implemented. And then if it is, in, uh, if it is a polynomial, but it has a different degree, we should also uh, return not implemented. So I'm going to write that check first. And we can just check um, if, um, yeah, using this part here, actually, we can just write if not is instance, instance, that's again wrong, instance like that. <laughs> uh, if not instance is instance other polynomial, uh, so if 
other is not a polynomial um, or we also want to check if the degree is the same or len of self is not equal uh, len of other then we want to return not implemented and uh, we can use this in you can do this in just one uh, if statement because if statements in uh, Python are lazy and um, yeah, it will check um, it, wait, it doesn't, I think it doesn't actually work. Um, it probably works for this task, but uh, this might not work. So um, since the first, since this is an or, um, it will definitely check both of these options. If this was an and, um, then it will only check the first one uh, then it will check the first one and only check the second one if the first one was true. Uh, but the or can be true um, if one of them is true. So this would probably, um, this could probably lead to some error. Uh, for example, if other is not a polynomial and um, the, the other object does not implement the len function, then this would throw an error um, which says that other does not have a len. Um, so we should write that in a different way. So, for example, um, we can just re uh, reverse that. So uh, we can ask if other is a polynomial and uh, the len of the two things are equal. And then we want to do our addition. And otherwise, if that wasn't the case, then we want to return imp not implemented. Um, implemented. And... Uh, the, using uh, it this way, we can make sure that it only calls len on other if it is a polynomial. Because otherwise, if it's not a polynomial, we don't know if this other object has a len uh, method implemented. Okay, so now we can do the addition. And here, um, I think that some of you tried using uh, the zip function, just um, iterating over self and other. And this led to some uh, weird behavior because this actually caused uh, an infinite loop to form because um, later on one uh, use case here is accessing the coefficients and here it says that every call to um, this get item um, method that is like larger which has an index larger than the maximum um, degree of the polynomial should return zero. But when iterating over uh, this object, it will use this get item uh, method uh, to iterate over it and it will stop when get item throw the, throws an error. But if we never throw an error and just return zeros, it will just continue iterating over this polynomial. And uh, yeah, in that way, it will not uh, come to an end and will just run endlessly. So we can't uh, use just an iteration over the other uh, and the self since um, in use case 8 we would uh, yeah then break this add function but um, yeah if you didn't know that while implementing add um, it would probably work and uh, there would not be a problem but then going to use case 8 and implementing that this would probably break your use case 6 and you would have fig uh, you would have had to figure out uh, why the this use case uh, doesn't work anymore, and this was a little tricky, I guess. Um, but I hope that uh, I explained that um, so that you could understand why that was the case. And I'm going to show you how you can avoid this problem. Um, yeah, I will do that now. Um, so we want to add the um, coefficients of the two polynomials element-wise. And for that, um, we will have to iterate over the coefficients and we want to return a new polynomial in the end. So we will have to call the polynomial constructor and uh, we want to pass some new uh, coefficients there. So the addition, the element wise addition of um, yeah, other and self. So um, here we want to do a list comprehension and in this list comprehension, we want to add the two coefficients together. And so we can call them C1 
and then we want to add the C2, which is, should be the second coefficient. And um, yeah, we need to iterate over self and other in some way, but we can just uh, we can't just use self and other to iterate because that will um, get broken in use case eight. And uh, for now, this wouldn't work anyways because we don't have a get item um, function here. So we have to iterate over some other um, other yeah attribute of self and other, uh, but we can just use these coefficients here. So we have C1 plus C2 in um, for C1 and C2 in, and then we use zip again in self dot coefficients and other dot coefficients. And we can just use the underscore coefficients attribute here. Um, and this is like not really that bad because we're inside the polynomial class anyways and we know how this uh, underscore coefficients works. And um, even though this should signal, um, this should signal the users that this coefficients attribute is kind of private, uh, we can use it because we're in the same class and we know what we did and what we implemented here. So this should not be a problem. Um, okay, just make this bigger. And um, yeah, this wouldn't work yet because the polynomial um, in the constructor, we wanted to have a variable amount of coefficients. And here we just pass one uh, list comprehension. So one list is passed to polynomial. Um, so it would just assign um, this list as the first coefficient of the polynomial. And we don't want that. We want the single um, elements of this list to be individual coefficients. And for that, we can just unpack this list comprehension using this star. And um, yeah, this will just take this whole list and um, unwrap the elements basically and add them just as single parameters to the polynomial constructor call. And now, um, yeah, this should work since we add the two coefficients element wise here and we don't iterate over self and other directly, <clears throat> but we iterate over the coefficients lists here. Okay, and then if we run the PyTest, we see that seven test uh, cases now passed and the addition was successful here. Okay, great. Um, so this is one way to implement this. Um, as you can see, and as I mentioned earlier, there's also this uh, element-wise add lambda function. Oh, there's a comment. Um, Yeah, that's true. Um, so in the OR, the OR is also lazy. So if the first um, part of the OR is true, it will not, um, it will not, uh, yeah, it will not evaluate the second part. Um, so yeah, you're probably right actually. <clears throat> Since we have a NOT here, so if NOT is instance, then uh, this NOT is instance is true if um, the polynomial is not an instance, if other is not an instance of polynomial. And uh, yeah, if that is true, it will already return not implemented. So yeah, um, what I showed you before using this, if not is instance and uh, and then or len unequals len of the other, that would also work. So um, yeah, I got a little confused there myself. Um, but thank you for that comment. That was correct. <clears throat> okay, so, but I was just talking about the, um, this, uh, what was it here? The element wise function here, this Lambda. And this was given in the description, uh, in the task description here. And we can also use that. So I'll just add this here. This is a Lambda function, which takes two parameters and will return off, uh, it will return um, the element-wise addition of these two um, parameters here. And it is assumed that these two parameters are iterables of some kind, and we pass that to the zip function here. So this is very similar to what I did here um, with this self.coefficients in this zip, and uh, I added these together here. Um, this lambda function just uses the sum function, which also works, of course, 
and um, yeah, this can be used to just element uh, element wise add um, two lists together. And yeah, this would be another option to do this. This would actually um, make this constructor call a bit shorter. So uh, we can instead of doing this whole list comprehension, we can also just call this lambda function here. Um, so we say element wise add, and then we just pass self dot coefficients and other coefficients. And this way, um, yeah, these two lists get passed to this lambda function. And then this lambda function basically just does the same as I did before. Um, this was just a little uh, hint for you um, to show that this element wise addition works um, with the list comprehension quite easily. And you just have to pass two um, yeah, lists to this function. And to check if it still works, still seven cases passed, addition still works. So um, yeah, this is how you could use this lambda function here. Um, so the question now is why we can't use self and other, but we have to use uh, the self dot underscore coefficients and uh, other dot underscore coefficients. Um, we can't use just self and other here because Python doesn't know how to uh, iterate over an uh, object of the type polynomial. And I can just try this here. Um, if I just call this with other, we can have a look at the error message. And um, I will actually just call that test case to make it a little bit better visible. This is called test use case six edition. And if you just want to check one test function, um, you can do that by running pytest and the test file, then two colons, and then the name of this function. So test use case six, six, not one, and uh, addition. So this is just uh, a way to call just one function of the test file. And um, wait, why does this pass? I didn't save. <laughs> okay, now it failed. Um, we just iterate over self and other and not the coefficients of self and other. And the error here is that uh, polynomial is not iterable. So Python does not know how to iterate over a polynomial um, because we didn't tell it to. And uh, the only things we declared so far is that it has this attribute. It has a certain length. Um, this representation will not help with that accessing these coefficients. Python will not know if this will be um, what it has to iterate over. These comparisons um, will not help and this act function also doesn't help Python when figuring out um, yeah, why uh, or which elements it should iterate over. If we call, um, yeah, if we use just this object in a, in a, in a, in a for loop here. So um, yeah, this is the problem. Um, we can't just write self and other. Python doesn't know how to iterate over a polynomial. And we can tell Python how to do that. And um, this will actually um, be done in this use case, eight, uh, use case 8, as I said before. Um, this get item function is used by, uh, by loop. But um, since this test uh, use case 8 is uh, designed in a certain way, um, namely that it should return zero for all indices larger than the degree of the polynomial, then we can't use this get item in the loop anymore because it would just run endlessly. And um, yeah, let me just create a file so I can, uh, I can show that. And I'm just gonna create a notebook. Okay, I'm gonna make that as large as I can. Okay, I'll go to untitled here. Um, this is just a notebook to show you why this doesn't work. And we'll just create a, create a class, let's call it A. Um, and we'll give it an, uh, a constructor. And we'll also um, have it uh, have a variable amount of um, parameters here. And again, we'll just say self dot, um, I don't know, coefficients equals arcs. And this is just very similar as uh, we had in our polynomial. And if we execute this, uh, we get the class A. 
um, already here. Uh, I want to create an object of that and I want to pass, I don't know, one, one, two, three. And now I want to iterate over A. And I actually want to iterate over the coefficients, um, but Python will not know what to iterate over if I just say um, for element in A. So this will not know what an element should be from A, since A doesn't have a way of telling Python what the elements are. And uh, yeah, this does not work. Uh, it says the same error here, A object is not iterable, but um, we can make it iterable. And this is what will uh, happen in test case eight, use case eight. And I'm just gonna add a get item function here. And this uh, gets the self parameter and an index. And uh, if we return self.coefficients at the position index here, then Python will now know um, if I index A with a certain value, then it should take uh, coefficients at this index. So if we do this, this now works um, because this loop will internally call get item on A and it will start with zero and just go up to um, the number where this get item starts to throw an error. So what will happen um, actually is it will call a of zero first, and this is one. So this is the first iteration of the loop. Then the second one will go to a uh, at the position one. It will do this. Then it uh, still has not thrown an error, an error. It will go to a at the position two. Still works. It will increase the number again. And uh, now it gets this index out of range error. And as soon as this loop um, internally finds this index error, it will stop with the loop. So now it knows this loop is over and A does not have any more, um, yeah, any more um, values that we can iterate over. And uh, one way like, to basically show you how that works internally, um, it doesn't actually work like that. Uh, so this code is not actually written somewhere in Python, but uh, it's implemented, uh, yeah, I guess more efficient um, in the Python interpreter, but uh, it works equivalently, I guess. So we can uh, do for i in uh, range. And um, yeah, this would actually have to be uh, like an infinitely long range. Um, so maybe we can just do an i equals zero here and then while uh, true. So we want to iterate over uh, over something forever and uh, here in the end we just increase i by one and this um, now will check uh, if we have um, an element at that position so internally it will do something like a try and it will access a at the position um, a at the position i and uh, say this is some element and if this doesn't work so if uh, in this accept block, if we get an index error, um, then we break out of this loop. So this will somehow happen internally when using this for syntax. And um, element in this case is the same as this. And then after that here, um, this is where the actual for loop would, would start. So here you could write, uh, I don't know, the print element. And uh, this will work in the same way as this for loop here. And uh, as you can see, this just prints one, two, three, and it stops as soon as we hit this index error. And this is exactly what this for loop does. Now use case eight um, implements it in a way that doesn't return this index error at some point. And um, we can simulate that if we just say, um, yeah, return self to coefficients at the position of index. If our index is uh, less than the length of these coefficients, and um, if it's smaller than the length, return this uh, coefficients at the position index, and otherwise return zero. And this would be how um, the use case eight in the polynomial would be implemented. And if we now run this um, loop here, 
it will run forever. So it will just print zeros in the end because get item just returns zeros. And uh, as you can see uh, with the star here, this is still running, this is still printing zeros. This will go on forever until Python hits some internal limit, um, until something breaks in Python. So this is what happened in the polynomial um, when you had use case 8 implemented and um, you tried to iterate over the polynomial directly. I'm just going to stop this right here um, because, yeah, this this will run forever and I don't want it to run forever. And I just hide this output here. And um, this, I hope you can understand why this is the case. So we never hit this index error because this never is illegal. Um, so this call never throws an error. <clears throat> but if we had it like this, then at some point this coefficients list would say, um, I don't have a value at index because index might be larger than uh, the maximum index of, of coefficients. Then it will throw this index error and the for loop will catch this error and then break the loop. So yeah, if we, if we never throw the index error here, then it will just run forever and uh, we'll get an endless loop. Okay, I hope that answered the question why we can't iterate over self and other directly, but we have to iterate over the coefficients. Okay. So let's get back to our use cases. Um, we were just at the addition. So now we get to the multiplication, scalar multiplication. And this works uh, similarly as the addition. We have to uh, implement the mul, uh, the dunder function mul now. Um, so this gets uh, self and an other. And other will be some value we want to multiply with, uh, with our self. And uh, it says here we should make sure that other is an integer or float. And uh, then it should be the element-wise addition. And no, this is actually an error, I think. Yeah, this should be multiplication. <laughs> okay, so it should return the element-wise multiplication of the polynomial with this value. And uh, otherwise, it should return not implemented as above. So first we check um, if other is um, an integer or a float. And again, we use the is instance function from Python. And um, we say if is instance, um, let's spell it wrong again. If is instance self, no, we want to check other, we know the type of self. If other is either an integer or a float, then we want to uh, do the multiplication and otherwise we want to return not implemented. So how do we do the uh, multiplication? We just um, return a new polynomial with all the coefficients multiplied by other. And this works uh, just as in this add function and return uh, polynomial, polynomial and we do this list comprehension again, but now we say c times other for c in self.coefficients. And um, yeah, this will just multiply the current coefficient with other, which is our uh, thing we want to multiply with. And then uh, use this whole list comprehension, unpack that and pass this to the polynomial constructor. Um, yeah. And this will just create a new polynomial with the correct uh, coefficients here. And then it says we should also implement it in a way such that uh, one times some polynomial should also work. And for now, it only works if we say some polynomial times a number. Um, but we also want to implement the reversed multiplication. And uh, yeah, this is just a very simple uh, call because we already have mul implemented. And uh, yeah, this just means we can use mal to return uh, the result of the reverse multiplication. Since multiplication is uh, commutative, we can just flip it around and then use the implementation from mal. So we return um, other times self here. 
No, actually it's self times other. Because so far we have implemented polynomial times some other value. And now the reversed one would be other times polynomial. But this is exactly this call. And if we wrote return other times self here, we would have an endless recursion. And this would just call itself over and over again. Um, this is definitely what, not what we want. So we just say return self times other. And that's this call. And it will return the polynomial here. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, this is still the uh, this element wise add where we remove this coefficients. I'm just gonna add that back in. So, dot coefficients and dot coefficients, and then we remove um, just the call to this one test function. So, now we have eight passed tests. And we can see um, every test except this use case 8 accessing the coefficients worked now. Okay, and we come to this last case now. The last one is, as I already mentioned a couple of times, this get item method. <coughs> and um, I basically already showed the implementation in this uh, notebook I used here. And uh, the function is called get item and it takes self and some index and we will have to return self dot coefficients at the position index and then uh, as i said before this should return zero for all indices larger than the degree of the polynomial and uh, we can achieve that as i showed in the notebook using this uh, yeah this if so if uh, index is less than the length of self dot coefficients and otherwise just return zero and now all the tests passed here and this basic task is done but now i will also show um yeah show how the bonus task worked and how you could do that of course there are different ways of implementing that um many of them work and uh yeah you can write it in a way that might be very different from the one I'm going to show you, but that is still valid as long as it creates the polynomial from some string correctly. Okay, so we'll switch the test file here, switch it to bonus. Okay, it's not called bonus. What's it called? <laughs> it's called factory. That's what it's called. Okay, and one passed, one failed. The passed one is again the um, the one for the imports, so that we didn't import any additional libraries. Um, yeah, we see that up here, test imports passed, we didn't in, uh, import anything else, but the factory method doesn't work because we didn't implement it. <coughs> so let's do that now. Um, this factory method should be called from string, so we call it from string, and this will not get um, self because this should be a factory method. Um, or not a factory method actually, a factory function um, that is called on the class and not on an object. So it should create an object, but it's not called on one, it's called on the class. Um, and yeah, we just pass some string. So we have a parameter called string here and um, we want to work with that. Okay, and this string is in the format as we see here. So we somehow have to extract the numbers from these strings and remember which ones are the coefficients and which ones are the uh, exponents, for example. And uh, down here we have some assumptions that we can use um, when doing this task. And this will definitely help when implementing that. Um, okay, so the first one is that the string will always start with the highest exponent and is sorted from uh, highest to lowest. So we don't have to care about um, yeah, sorting it in some way or figuring out at what position this um, exponent is. We can assume that they're all sorted. Then the second one is that um, they're all positive coefficients. So we will always, ha always have a plus sign and never uh, a minus sign. Um, yeah, this is just a, a tip. It says we can split on this x caret. Um, to get the 
coefficient and the respective exponent from um, yeah from one substring. And um, yeah, this is a call. Uh, this is a piece of code which returns you the degree of the string, so the polynomial that is defined by the string, um, and this returns the degree of that. And then uh, lastly, just a tip or hint. Um, which shows you how you, how you can create this uh, multiples uh, coefficients list uh, using this degree that we define up here. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm going to start implementing from string. And what we want to do first is somehow split the string up into single, um, yeah, single parts, basically single summons um, that we can use later on. And to do that, we want to use the split method. Split will just split a string on some string that you pass to it. And uh, yeah, this is very useful to um, get different parts of a string into a list. And you can just write string dot split and split it on plus. And this will give you uh, the substrings um, split on plus. And we don't want to do that on the whole string because the string will always start with a parenthesis uh, with an opening parenthesis and close um, and stop with a closing parenthesis so we want to uh, index the string and go from the second element until um, yeah the second to last and only use that because we don't care about the parentheses here okay and this will give us um, yeah basically this coefficient x caret exponent and now we can use that to um, yeah, filter out the numbers. So I'm actually actually gonna, uh, just going to use this in a list comprehension. And uh, yeah, we can iterate over this list now. So what we want to do is uh, take this substring here. Um, so we take each of these parts, which are split at the plus sign. And we want to split that again. And we split that on this x caret. Just as um, shown in this hint, we can use split with this x caret. And this will give us the two numbers in the list. But note that these two numbers are still strings and not integers. So we want to convert them to um, integers somehow. And we can do that um, with the map function, for example. So if we call map, and say we want to use the int function and we want to call the int function on every element of this split result then it will um, convert this list of strings into a list of integers okay so now we have um, a list of lists and in the inner lists uh, we have uh, always two elements and the first one is always the coefficient and the second one is always the um, yeah, the the exponent. And now this is very useful, but um, to make it even more useful, we can make uh, turn this into a dict uh, dictionary, so that we can actually access um, the coefficients for a certain um, exponent. So we want to have the exponent as a key, and then the coefficient as the value, um, so that if we later iterate over uh, different exponents then we can use this dictionary to look up the um, matching um, coefficient for a certain exponent. And we turn this list of uh, lists into a dictionary using just the dict call. And um, this will work because this is a list of lists and the inner lists will only have two elements. And uh, this is a valid call to this dict function, um, which will create a dictionary for us. And uh, can you actually just return this uh, now and run the test so that you can see how it looks um, and this already yeah this didn't work yet um, this returned your polynomial here is a dictionary with the key one and the value zero um, you don't have to care about this what it's supposed to be because we didn't implement it uh, correctly yet we just returned the dictionary here but um, this is yeah this is not what we wanted the call up here as we can see, was from string with this um, 1x to the power of 1 plus 1x to the power of 0. But we wanted to have our exponents as keys, 
and now we just have one here. And we have one here because it used the coefficient as a key. And we have um, the coefficients one and one. And since keys in dictionaries are always unique, um, it will just create one entry and set it to zero because zero was the second one here and we started with this one first. So in the list comprehension here, um, we had um, yeah this dictionary with a one uh, as a key and a one as a value first. And then it encountered the second one here. Again, key is one, but now this, and this value is zero and it will overwrite this uh, value with a key one and set that to zero. So we somehow want to reverse that such that the exponents are keys and the uh, coefficients are values. And we do that by just uh, yeah, reversing this uh, list, this inner list. And we, re we reverse a list uh, by either using this, um, yeah, this indexing here with square brackets and a colon colon and minus one. Um, or we could also use the reversed function. But in this case, I will just use this uh, indexing method because it's shorter. Um, yeah, to, leave, to keep this line a little bit more readable. So if we run this again, we now can see that um, oh, map is not subscriptable. Oh yeah, um, map will return a generator in Python 3. So we have to convert that to a list first so that we can index it. And we do that by um, yeah, just calling list and passing this map generator. If we do that, we get our dictionary here and it has one as a key um, with value one and then zero with value one. And the keys here now are our exponents and the values are the coefficients just as we wanted. Okay, perfect. So now what can we do with that? Uh, we want to save that somewhere. Um, we can call it mapping, for example, uh, since we have a mapping from exponents to uh, coefficients. And now we want to figure out what this degree is of the polynomial. And we have two ways of doing that. One is already given here. So we can use this call here. And if I just paste it in there, we can see that the degree is um, yeah, this string with removed uh, parentheses split at the plus and then uh, we use the zeroth element of that, so we take the highest exponent, split that again, and then use the second element of the split, which is the exponent, and add one, which is then the degree here. Um, this would definitely work if we want to get the degree. Um, I'll show you another way which also works, since we already have this dictionary here. We can also just call max on um, yeah, mapping.keys and keys are our, um, yeah, the keys are our, um, our exponents. We can say that the maximum exponent, um, so the degree of the polynomial is the maximum exponent here, plus one. So this is the same as the call I showed before. Um, and since we have this dictionary already, we can just use this as well, and it's shorter. Okay. Um, now we have the degree of the polynomial and a mapping for each of these um, exponents. So we have a coefficient for every exponent. And now we want to return a new polynomial using this mapping and this maximum degree. And we have to call the constructor, of course, um, called polynomial. And um, we want to pa pass the list comprehension again, so we have to unpack that in the end. Um, yeah, but, we, but what we want to do here is take our coefficient um, for a certain exponent and um, put that into this list comprehension. So we have to iterate over the mapping somehow. And we want to um, iterate from highest exponent to lowest exponent. No, actually the other way around. We want to iterate from lowest exponent to highest exponent because in the constructed call um, it said that the first argument should be the exponent should have exponent zero, so we should start with exponent zero and then go up to the highest degree. Okay, so we will do that with a range, um, and we'll just call this i in uh, this range, and the range is up to uh, degree, 
and um, this will just iterate through the numbers from zero up to degree and um, yeah now we can use this to index our mapping here so we want to use the coefficient um, which is stored in mapping at the key i so i is now our exponent exponent with which we want to access this mapping dictionary and uh, this will return us the value um, for the certain exponent here but since um, we don't know if in string all the values are defined uh, all the coefficients are defined um, we have to make sure that i is actually inside mapping um, because zero coefficients can be left out in this string and uh, the zero coefficients are not inside of this mapping dictionary and um, yeah that's why this would throw an error if we try to access mapping with i if i is an exponent that was not defined in string so here inside this list comprehension we can just use an if so we want to um, use mapping at the position i if map uh, if i is in mapping and otherwise just use zero so this is now the value in the list comprehension and it will use mapping at the position i so it will take the value of the exponent i from mapping if i is in mapping so if i is a key in mapping and otherwise it will just use zero as a coefficient okay and now i think this should work <clears throat> we probably have to add um, one extra line at the top um, because yeah what was the error here invalid literal for int with base 10 and the literal was empty string and this problem arose because um, yeah we we had basically an empty um, list and um, this is probably also shown up here if we have a look at this error message we can see that the call was um, where is it um, yeah the call was here so this uh, yeah, this uh, greater sign shows that this call failed and uh, this call from string with just empty parentheses here. And this created an empty mapping here. And um, yeah, this caused an error because this map function uh, was called on um, yeah this empty string and um, called int on this empty string. And yeah, you can't turn an empty string into an integer. And this is why we got this value error. And uh, yeah, we can just avoid this problem by saying um, if string is just um, empty parentheses, then we want to return an empty polynomial. And this is just a way to um, remove this special case um, from our function. And now this code down here should always work because um, this will never be an empty um, parentheses string now since we already caught that up here okay and if we run this we can see this passed and now we have implemented the polynomial function correctly okay and that's everything there was to this homework um, if there are still questions to this please write them in the chat now otherwise i will stop the recording for the sample solution and then we can just move on with the practice session. Okay, so are there any more questions? Looks like there aren't. That's good. Okay, there's one. Um, so do you mean when we use uh, the representation function? Um, okay, so we use this wrapper um, dunder if we want to um, yeah, convert our polynomial to a string in some way. And um, if we create an object of this class polynomial and this implements this function here, then this will be called internally if we, for example, pa um, pass this object to print. And print will internally call this function here 
um, to convert that uh, object into a string and print that string out because it can't print a literal object um, <clears throat> but it has to print some string so this function is used to um, yeah return the representation of this polynomial as a string um, I hope this already answers this questions there's also a string function so um, the um, dunder string this also exists um, this could also return um, some string <clears throat> and this will be called uh, if you call this str so if we say um, str poly 6 for example if we do this then this will call the dunder string function here but if we don't implement this here um, it will actually fall back to the representation so this representation is used whenever we want to convert something to a string um, and actually also as a fallback for this um, string call here okay if we don't use wrapper um, yeah, if we don't use it then we can't um, print the representation of the object and yes it prints out the memory address so it will create I can show that here again um, using our A class and if we just print A here it will say this is uh, an object and uh, the object is of the type underscore underscore main underscore underscore dot A A is our class name here we call this A and this dunder main um, is just the name of this program so every Python program that you run has a certain name and this can be found in a certain variable um, and this variable is called dunder name and this dunder name has the value underscore underscore main um, and this is just shown um, here to make sure that um, the user knows that a comes from this file here and um, yeah this add and then this long number um, this is just the memory address of this object so this will differ um, every time you create this object and this will just show you in hexadecimal where this object is located in your memory and usually that's not important um, unless you're doing something with your memory and then uh, you want to find where exactly this uh, object is in memory but uh, yeah usually in Python I don't think you need that so it's just it's just printed here okay any more questions okay so I will stop the recording for the sample solution then